All right, so intercompany transfers in QuickBooks Online. What I mean by this is, so if you're running multiple businesses under separate books, so whether you're working for a company that might have multiple businesses kind of under them, or if you're an owner of a company that has multiple LLCs or corporations, if you're a real estate company, for example, and you create multiple LLCs for liability purposes, you probably would keep separate financial books for each one because of that. And a lot of the times when you're doing that, maybe you transfer money in between these separate companies or uh, bank accounts, or you can maybe sometimes you'll pay for expenses from one bank account, one co business bank account that might be for expenses for another uh, one of those businesses. What we're going to go over today is how to record that in QuickBooks Online from both companies. So let's say you have access to both QuickBooks Online files and if there's money going kind of back and forth between the companies, even though they're separate files, uh, we're going to go over how to handle that in QuickBooks Online. So first we want to create some accounts in the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online for both companies. A good way to look at it, I just have this little sheet here we can kind of go over. You're going to have two options with this. It's really up to you how you want to handle it. One option would be to, so we're going to create essentially a kind of do to do from account for each company. When, when it, so whenever you're paying for expenses or transferring money, you're going to be putting it down in the QuickBooks that you owe the company, the other company, other uh, money for the expense or the transfer. So you can either create one lump sum, kind of a do slash do to slash do from liability account, and the money will kind of go back and forth there. So positives, negatives, and eventually, hopefully, um, become zero. Or you can separate them into two different accounts. So you can create the do from account as an asset account, and then you can create the do to account as a liability account. The both work, maybe talk, talk to your tax person or uh, your owner, whoever, to what would make most sense, whether you want to simplify it and create just one account, or if you want to split it up, because technically, if you, uh, you know, you're owed money, it is an asset versus a liability. If you do the lump sum account for the liability, the do to from, and let's say you, you, you the other company owes you money, company A money, for example, then this would essentially be a negative liability. So it kind of looks messy in the books. It still does the same thing with debits, credits, assets, you know, liabilities. It still does the same thing, but it's weird because you have a negative liability versus a positive asset. So this is up to you. I'm going to go over both of them both ways so you have an idea, but essentially how you would do that. So again, we're talking about the chart of accounts here. So in your QuickBooks Online file, you know, the, the gear icon here in the top right, under settings, you can see chart of accounts. There's multiple ways to get here. And then you can hit plus new here. So let's say, for example, right now we're working in company A QuickBooks Online. For the first one, if we want to lump sum it into one account and we're company A, we want to create a do to from company B liability account. So you would essentially just go to other current liabilities. Doesn't really matter what you choose here. Loan payable works. And then you would just put do to slash from company B. And again, we're working, we're saying that we're company A right now in this QuickBooks. So then you wouldn't save and close that. And if you're just doing a lump sum thing, that's all you would do in company A. For company B, you would log into their books, do the same exact thing, but you would just put in due to from company A. If you want to separate it, then you would create a current asset first. Or you can, I guess you can make an accounts receivable. That would make sense. And then, so you can do to, I'm sorry, do from company B. Save that. And then you would do another liability. And this would be do to company B. And then again, you would sign into company B books. This could be C, D, D, E, F, as many as you want. And but you would sign into for this example, company B's books, and you do the same exact thing, you would create a do to company A, yeah, company A liability account and a do from company A asset account. Now we can go over I think it's easier before jumping into playing around in QuickBooks Online, I think it's easier to kind of look at it as a um, from a broad perspective with the debits and credits of what's actually happening for these different 
situations, whether you're paying for an expense for another company or if you're transferring money between the two. And then it'll make much more sense whenever you're handling QuickBooks Online of like what's actually happening behind the scenes. So this will really eliminate uh, potential for a mistake here. We're gonna split this up. So we're gonna say this is either if company A pays for a company B expense or transfers money to company B. And if this is company B to A, C to D, whatever it is, just you just reverse all this. But let's just, for the simplification for this video, we're just gonna say company A to company B. On the company A side, we wanna debit the due to from company B account. So again, this could either be the asset account we set up or the, the, uh, the liability account that we're just putting it all under. So you want that to be debited. And the credit will be the bank account credit or petty cash if you're paying with cash, either one. So that's gonna be the debit and credit on the company A side. On the company B side, we want to debit, which increases an in expense. So if we paid for an expense directly from company A funds, we would debit the expense here. If we transferred money to company B from company A, we would debit that bank account here, which increases the bank account amount. And the credit will be the due to company A liability account. So on one side, we're saying due from company B asset. On the other side, we're saying due to company A liability. And then the expenses are handled here. After that happens, step two will be company B reimburses company A. And what we want to happen here on company A side, we debit the bank account or the cash, we pay them back in cash. And that just handles the money being moved to company A. And then we credit the due to from company B, again, either the asset or liability account. So that either brings the liability back to zero. So it increases, it de decreases the liability or it increases the asset. And then on the company B side, we wanna debit the due to company A liability account. So that decreases that liability, gets that liability off the books and then credit the bank account or cash wherever we paid for. So that's the behind the scenes of what we want to happen with the debits and credits between these two transactions. Once we know that, and once we have the chart of accounts created in the QuickBooks Online, and then it's really straightforward from there. You can handle this either through the bank feeds or journal entries, wherever makes most sense in your, uh, in your workflow. Again, if you're doing journal entries, you can just hit new journal entry and again, this, we're doing this from company A side right now. So you just put in the date just like normal. And again, for the first one, when you're paying the expense or transferring them money, you would first just do the due to from company B asset account, and then either cash here, cash on hand if you're paying in cash, or the bank account will be credited, the due to from will be debited. Now, if you're doing it from the bank feed, So once the, if it is being paid via a, a bank, this is different if it's cash, because cash you would pretty much just do the journal entry. If it's paid for via the bank, you would show it on the bank feed here whenever it hits your bank, and it'll be under the spent column. So essentially all you would do in the bank feed is just categorize it as that due to from account. And when you do that, that'll debit that due to from as we want, and then it'll credit your bank account. So it's essentially doing the same thing, it's just doing it in different ways. Another way, if you're transferring money, you can do new transfer. And again, transfer from your bank account, transfer to that due to from company B account. It's all accomplishing the same thing. So those are your options for the first step, which is when you're actually paying for the expense or giving the money to company B on the company A side. On the company B side, when you receive the money, the same thing just in reverse. You can either do the journal entry, so the same way, so you can put in whatever expense it was here. And then this would be the due, this, so this would actually be due to from company A, liability account that you would be crediting and debiting the expense. Same thing in the bank feed. Um, well, no, nothing would happen in the bank feed yet. So yes, you would want, for this on company B side, this would pretty much have to be, yes, this would pretty much have to be a journal entry because it's not gonna show up in your bank feed or anything because it wasn't paid in it for any of your banks. So this would have to be you know, a new journal entry to do that, to handle that. So now when the company reimburses it, so again, on company A side, so there would be a debit to the bank account on company A so whenever you receive it, it looks like something like this in your bank feed. Again, 
if you just categorize it as that due to from account, it would essentially do the same thing. It would debit just like we want the bank account and then it would credit the due to from account. And same with company B. So in this case, in the bank feed, it would be a credit. So it would look like a transfer to the other account. And then same thing, we can either credit the new transfer, journal entry, or do it in the bank feed, just essentially choosing the due to from company A liability or and or asset account.